Well, welcome back, Blender aficionados. This is a, a pretty cool little texture. I've been having fun playing around with this. It's super easy. This whole effect right here on everything, the weathered edges, all that stuff, except for this right here. This is a decal that I'm just playing around with. I'll probably do this in another video, but for this video, we'll talk about just the weathered edges. And it's super easy. This is done, no UV maps, and it's just all controlled with one image. So you can go right here, you can swap it out get different effects, different looks that you might want to do. And of course, the color is customizable. So like this right here is another example of that this is a center block using the exact same method right here. And right here we have a rim using the exact same method. And of course, we can easily change these out also. So let me show you how I did this. It's pretty easy. And let's go to this guy right here. We're going to start off with a very simple principle, BSDF. So we're gonna take the base color, drag it out, just grab ourselves an image texture and choose whatever seamless texture you want you think will work. I have a couple of good ones, so we're just gonna, actually I have one loaded. So we're just gonna go right here and we're gonna use this old sheet metal texture I have right here. So let's just hit Control T to bring our texture coordinates. Instead of using the UV, we're gonna use the object right here for the vector, right? You see it's doing something strange, that's okay. This is that for flat and repeat, let's just go to box. So now it's gonna make ourselves a little box map right here. So it's going down from this way, that way, that way, and let's just blend it in just a little bit. And I know this is a cheap way to do it, but this is probably the easiest way just to get a texture on there that looks halfway decent without using any UV mapping. So that's what we're gonna start off with right there. So now that we have our basic setup right here, we can move it and all the axi, just like that. And if we just hold this down, select them all, 0.7, we can actually change the size too. Whatever we need, need it to be, right? So that is the first part of this setup, is getting yourself a nice, tileable, seamless texture on there. Okay, so next thing we need to do, we need to add a color ramp. Now, since we're using a bitmap to control this, we're gonna be using a whole bunch of color ramps. And basically this is just gonna let us give it a little more contrast if we need to, uh, and it'll affect everything down the chain. The way this is set up, we're setting up this so that everything down here affects everything over here in a certain way. And we're also gonna work on all this other stuff right here too, but let's just not worry about that right now. We're gonna add two more color ramps. Add a color ramp here, let's drag this one out. Another color ramp right here. So now we got all this set up, we need to add a mix color. But of course, we're using everything off of a bitmap, so everything has to be a color. We have the color into A, and this bottom one into B, right? And let's go ahead and just link this in here so we can see what's going on for right now. We're gonna hit Control and Shift, select the top one. And this is where we're gonna start adding a little bit of color, right? So we want this to be blue. So let's just add the base color over here, add a blue. And let's just bring this down so we're starting to crush some of this right here. This is gonna be our rust. So this darker color needs to obviously be a brown rust color, right? So let's go ahead and hit a plus right here, add another one. Let's make this a little a darker brown. See how we're starting to add a little bit of detail in here? We're starting to build our rust with these colors. And this is gonna blend into that. Let's go ahead, let's make this more of a blue right here. Let's say that kind of blue. And then let's add one more blue now let's just make this just a little bit darker. So now we got a little bit of variation right here. You can see we're just using the luma value from all this over here, this guy right here. And that's why we're just breaking it down to this. So this black and white. So we're taking the luma value and we're breaking it apart based off the luma to give us our colors. So now let's go to the bottom right here and let's just select this guy right here to add another one. So a plus, and we're just gonna select that. With this one, we're just gonna select that one. So now if we go Control Shift and click on this one, we can see we're starting to build our base color. So let's just go ahead and make this, we'll crush this just a little more. Let's get rid of all that blue. We don't want too much blue on this one. We wanna just bring this down, have a little bit of variation right here. So now if we go to the mix, we can pump this out and we can see kind of what's going on. So we're gonna use a factor here to control all this, right? All right, so let's go up here. Let's uh, drag this down right here. Let's just take this guy right here and hit Shift D so we can duplicate it. So I thought I'd do another search for it. And then right here, Control A, we're gonna search for 
ambient occlusion. We're going to make two of these, right? Let's hit Shift D so we can get another one right here. And for this first one, let's hit Control and Shift and click on this top one so we can see what's going on. And we're going to go just eight inside. Look only. We're going to do 0 0.05. So let's just get rid of that one. Let's, just, let's duplicate this one so we don't have to make another one. Shift D. So now we got both of these duplicated. And for this one right here, what we're going to do, let's go ahead and control and shift, click into that one so we can see it. We'll make this a little bit smaller, so like 0 0.02. That should work. And then we're gonna take both of these, pump them out into color here, color here. We're gonna change this to multiply, turn the factor all the way up. Now let's just drag this guy out. We're gonna do a color ramp and control shift, click on this. And now we can see where we're starting to just make a mask for our edges. We're gonna use this ambient occlusion. I know it's a big, you know, cheat. People have been doing this for a long time, but this is how we're gonna control our edges, right? So let's go ahead and work on that. So what we're doing with these, both of these are blending together. This is gonna be the smaller sections. We need to go like 0.01 for this one right here. And let's just do 0.06. Let's try that. So now we're kind of feathering it out and we have a little bit of area here for our edge wear. So we can go right here and we can darken it up even more. We can go to this guy right here, pump it out slightly more maybe, like 0 0.07. And let's do this one maybe 0 0.02. All right, so now we got some pretty obvious spots in here for our edge wear. So this is where things start to get a little fun. So we're gonna just take this guy, let's just move it here so we can keep it a little bit organized. We're gonna take the color and put it into the factor right here, right? Boom. So now we got the color and the factor. Let's go ahead and hit Control Shift and click on this one right here. And now we can start playing around with this. So we look right here. This is going to be our rust. This is going to be our main color. And we're going to mix both of those in right here. So now what we got to do, we're going to have to play around with the sizing here to get how we want. So let's just try maybe like 0.6. And let's go to this guy right here and bring all this back. This is gonna be our main color. Let's just bring this back. We want it to kind of mix into our rust right here, right? So let's go ahead over here and we're just gonna move this around a little bit. Let's try to get some rust right here on the edges, kind of where we want. You see how we're starting to pull this in? And let's put this right here. Let me move this up some. I want some right there. I want some right around here. So this is kind of where I want my rust to be, right around these edges, a little bit on there. And let's see, we can't blend it in. Need a little more right here. I think that's looking pretty good. And look at this. You can use this to add a little more. See how this is all starting to work out right now? So we can add a little bit more detail right here. And now we're starting to get what looks a little bit more like rust. Let me try that. Let me try this one right here and see how this one looks. This is where you can start just playing around with images. Not every image might not work perfectly. Uh, that might be a little too much. So we'll just go back to this guy right here. But you can see how you can have a lot of fun and just kind of tinker around with it. And you're using the bitmap to control all this. So let's maybe try pumping this back just a little bit right here. All right. So let's pull this back a little more brush it right here and we can bring this guy up some more to add a little bit more rust it does take a little bit of finagling but you can see we're starting to dial it in a little more right here maybe let's add one more in here so we can look in here and we can really see what's going on with this maybe we can add this down a little bit more let's just swap these around Maybe that one, take a little bit of a saturation out. So yeah, let's see how that, yeah, now see, we're starting to get a lot more edges right here. And the reason why I like doing this, because you don't need to add, you know, noise or anything to break up your edges. You're letting the bitmap do all the work for you. And it looks pretty darn good. So now if I go back over here and we can see the end result just for right now, we're starting to get there, right? So I know you're looking at this like, man, that looks pretty flat. It's not very dynamic. Well, this is where it gets even more fun. Let's just drag all this down over here. What we're gonna do based off of this guy right here, cause we need all this, the next point for this to come out, we're gonna start affecting the roughness and the specularity 
And we can also do the metallic also. So let's just take one off right here, another color ramp. And from here, we're gonna add a bump to the height, right? So we got that. We're gonna take normal out, but if you look right here, now we're starting to get it normal. So we can take this out to our normal right here. But it's gonna be super freaking strong. So we're gonna have to dial this back. And one good thing about doing it like this, you can take this and we can just isolate the rougher areas to the rust portion of your object. Like right around here. And let's, uh, let's bring this back so it's not going into the paint that much. Let's bring it back closer to the rust. And let's go to the side real quick so you can see what's going on in the light. That's why I like to have a environment map and an actual light in here so you can see a lot better what's going on with your own textures rather than just go right here to material preview. You see it's not gonna look quite the same. You really need to go to a render view to see how this looks in Eevee. So we're gonna go right here and let's, uh, let's just bring the strength back. It's a little too much. Let's invert it. So I think we're starting to look like we're, the paint's peeling right into the rush right here. So let's, let's see what we got here. Let's kind of play this just a little bit right around there. So now we have a little bit of rust going on. Let's back this off just a little more. We don't want too much, just a tiny little bit like so. There we go. Now see the paint starting to bubble up where the rust is, starting to look a lot like rust and how it looks on a real object right here. All right, so let's back out just a little bit and let's move all this down so we can add another Color ramp. We're using a lot of color ramps today, boys and girls. Now let's just uh, copy this one. So let's just duplicate it, drop it right here. And then we're not gonna take it into the base color. No, 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 sir, not yet. We're gonna take, gosh darn it. You just, just stop. Let's take this it's right here and we're gonna take this out to the roughness. And we'll take it also into the specular level right there. Let's pull the metallic up. And now you can see we got a little bit of reflection going on, but we also need to add one more. So let's just uh, duplicate this one, pump that into there, into the metallic. So now that we have one of the metallic also. So let's first play with the metallic. Let's uh, look at this. Let's give it a little more contrast. We have more variation here. Try that. There we go. Now it's only where the paint, and when it gets to the rust, see how the rust is not reflective? And that's what we want. We're trying to give it all that variation so that way we have a little bit of paint still there, and where the rust is, we do not have anything reflective. It's kind of the same deal with the specularity. Let's just go ahead and give a little more variation right here. Bring this back right around there. I think that should work for right now. But you guys are now, you're getting the idea of how this whole effect works. And of course, you know, we can sit here and play around with all these colors. We can darken it up and do all that. But this, I think for this tutorial, this is good enough to show you guys how we can add those variations. But you know, one more thing we are missing is ambient occlusion. So from this side right here, we need to actually add an ambient occlusion that is going to work correctly and not be edge rust. So we're gonna hold, then I want to search. Let's just take both of these, control D and move them over here. And let's take this guy right here. We're gonna pump this into, all right, there, we're gonna take this right here. Let's see how this looks. And let's just go I don't like doing one, I like doing around like, you know, only 0.7, right around there. And we can bring this back. So now we can get nice ambient inclusion on the object. We're gonna take the result for here. We're gonna put it into that and put it down to the base color multiply all the way out. So now if we pump it out to this guy, you can see we now have 
adjustable ambient occlusion, which is now getting right up in our edges where we want them. So that also helps make it a lot less flat. You can see we still have way too much bump in here. So let's take this bump and turn it down right around here. We don't want too much. We want just enough to capture all that light right there. See that? So now it is a mess with all these variables montage and we'll get it to look exactly at least how I want. Let's go. All right, after all those changes, I think I got it kind of how I want it to be. And you can see there's definitely a bunch of variables you can change. Uh, you can play around with all this stuff. What I did was instead of doing a, a color ramp that's specific to the metallic, I just used the color ramp and I plugged that into the roughness and the um, IOR level, which is basically the specular level. And I think that worked out pretty good and gave it more of the effect that I was looking for. So. Hopefully this tutorial has been good for you guys and you can use this in your projects. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe and peace.